Explosions, or more correctly, particle effects, are a big part of any game. The nice thing about particle effects is they really bring some flair to a game. Now, the one thing about a network game is particle effects need to be synchronized in terms of the position. The exact particle effect doesn't have to be synchronized, so if we have an explosion with some randomness to it, the explosion that shows up on each machine, it can look different. The particles can be randomly distributed differently. The most important thing, the main thing, is that that particle effect appears in the same location on all of the machines. One of the things that's changed with Unity 4 is there's a whole new particle system. So why don't we go to the asset store and grab some particle effects. The nice thing about this simple particle pack is it uses the new particle system. So let's import it now. So you can see we have it here, simple particle pack, and under resources, we'll find some nice explosions. Okay, so let's get our coconut status. And let's add something new. Let's add a new explosion transform. So here's the place for our explosion, and let's just grab a simple burst from the particle pack. Okay, now that we've attached that, we can instantiate it in our script. If we come to this coconut is owned, that's a good place to put our particle effect. So, as you can see, we're simply locally instantiating it. Notice it's not a network instantiate, it's a local instantiation because this method's already being invoked by an RPC. And the other thing you'll notice that's new is this destroy. With the old particle system, we could have one-shot particles, they could do their thing and they would automatically disappear. With the new particle system, we have to destroy the particle system when we're done with it. So let's take a look at these particles in-game. First we're going to host a game, and then we'll join a game. All right, there's a coconut. Let's just grab it. Boom. As you can see, we're getting the particle effect when we pick the coconuts up. But what about when we join a game running on another machine? So I'm going to fire a game up on another machine, and then we're going to join that game. Okay, I've done that. Let's, let's join that game now. Okay, so now what's going to happen when the other player picks up a coconut? Let's just get ourselves to the middle of the island. And once we're here, I'm going to go over to the other machine and I'm going to bring the other player over. So as you can see, when the other player picks up coconuts, we see the effect on our machine. Okay, so just synchronizing particle effects is easy, but what about a particle effect that also has some physics associated with it. For example, an explosion. When we have an explosion, we need to make sure that the physics is synchronized across all of the machines. The easiest way to do this is to run the physics simulation just on the server, have the server determine who was affected by the explosion, and then once the server has determined who was affected by the explosion, the server can send out RPCs and have the correct things happen on each machine. So let's take a look at how that can work. What we're going to do is we're going to create a mine, and that mine is going to detect physics interactions with the objects on two layers, on the main character layer and on the ghost character layer. I just want to make sure we have literals defined for both of those layers. And so we have the ghost layer, but we don't have the main character layer, so I just want to put the main character layer in here.
All right, so we have a main character layer and a ghost character layer. And those are the two layers. When we do our physics, we're going to just look for objects on those two layers using a layer mask. And since we're using those two layers, we need to make sure the things that we want to detect are on those layers. Right now, the ghost character is not on the ghost layer. I don't know if you recall, but we're just putting the ghost character on the default layer for now. We need to change that. We need to make sure that the ghost character is actually on the ghost layer. Right here is where we were putting it on the default layer. You may recall we were giving it the ghost character tag but we hadn't done this layer yet. So let's fix this now so that the ghost character is on the ghost layer. It's as simple as that. 